Hello beautifuls! It has been such a long time since I've actually been able to sit and have this style of an energy exchange with you guys and I miss it. I thrive on it. It nourishes my soul. Um, it's just a beautiful, I miss it. Let's just say that. But I have been doing a lot of healing. I've had a lot of stuff come up um, that I've been clearing for again our our family lineage I've been clearing the collective Gaia so much behind the scenes stuff has been going on with me and a major shift in timelines on top of realizing some things that have happened to me and why they happened to me and it brings me to now <laughs> So let me just tell you guys a little bit about myself. I grew up in a spiritual household. My mother is a healer. My, the, all of the women in my family have been our healers or tarot readers, energy readers. Um, my grandmother used to do, my great grandmother used to do peyote. Um, she used to harvest peyote. She used to grow peyote and she used to have peyote huts where she would get people, people would come in and they would reconnect to their soul. Um, so we do, we've done a lot. My family is, has done a lot. And with that, you know, they say that you incarnate with your blessings. You have the, you have the gifts of your ancestors. You also have the woes of your ancestors and each generation before you. And I can see, looking back at our family, where with some of us, most of us, money was not a limiting belief. And then for some, money was a limiting belief. So it was just like some people had it to clear in our family and some people didn't have it to clear. And then just through different events in life, um, like the depression and stuff like that where they started holding on to their money and and just creating limiting beliefs that got passed down from generation to generation um, so I grew up with the with one thing that, that sticks out to me and that is if you have a skill set you will always have a way to make money so money for me was never an issue. Money growing up was not an issue. Did we have a lot of it? No. My parents divorced when we were nine and I think that was a really crushing moment for my mom. That was her second divorce. And we really felt that with the, the purse strings, so to speak. Um, so limiting beliefs really came in, I feel as a secondary to self-esteem self-worth and all of that that happens with a divorce we lose some of that we lose some of ourself and we lose our ability to manifest if we lose some of ourself right and I see how that played into my mother and grandmother and myself when I went through that really hard divorce wake-up call for myself so Needless to say, I am somebody who, I grew up with the notion that you had to work hard for money. So when I turned 16, I had two jobs. I, I loved things. I loved material things and I wanted those things. So I learned early on that I needed to work in order to have the life that I wanted. And there were moments in my, my life where when I got married, I was working two and three jobs and because that's what was instilled in me that that's how you made money. And then it came about, and I'm already going to jump ahead with some of the homework, but some of my limiting beliefs came from believing you needed a degree to make money. I think that's something I picked up in school, you know. You're not gonna be hireable without a degree. These days, people want this. And in order to make money, in order to have a good life, you're gonna have to have X, Y, Z degree, right? So that became something that I needed to chase also. That was just another thing to add to my list. But I'm here to tell you, 
even that is a limiting belief, okay? And it puts you in the rat race of working and working and working and working. And when I was introduced to the direct selling world, that was a game changer for me. That was able to put me at home with my children. That was able, a means for me to make money and not be tied to my hobby slash skill set that I had, that I was taught growing up. If you have a hobby or a skill set, you will always have money. So I used to always sew. I'm good, I can sew, I can craft and make really good money at it. But when you're the only person creating, designing, sewing, cutting, doing all of that, you are literally your own sweatshop. Like I was my own sweatshop. I made the money, but I didn't always get to enjoy that money unless I took a break. And if I took a break, that meant I got behind on my orders. So it was good. It was a good exchange. And then direct sales entered my life and I said, whoa, I can basically do the same thing that I'm doing as a home crafter only I don't have to make this stuff there's a warehouse that will ship it out for me blah 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 sign me up I'm all in um, because I had such a strong work ethic on working hard I just I could I'm somebody who can visually see what needs to be done and put my head down and work I do very well um, working on my own with a deadline. I am also a procrastinator, so I need a deadline. And, or self-recovering procrastinator. Words do have power. <laughs> I'm a self-recovering procrastinator. Um, so I jumped, I made money really fast in direct sales because I, I just had that belief in myself and I could see the way. I, I don't know how else to explain it, but I knew what I needed to do to get it done and I, I can just be laser focused when I want to be and it happens. So fast forward, I was the first consultant or the first person in my company to hit the top rank. I held that top rank for months, months solo. And my team was, I mean, you, you want a hero story that that's the hero story. Like top two, I was number one and number two out of like 60,000 people for ever since we left the company. And when the company closed down in this past June, um, I still had those positions and the only two people in the company to have that, those positions and I was one of them. So one of the things that I had to do as part of my healing journey was to remember where I came from. Look at my accomplishments, look at what I've done. I cannot let divorce defeat me. I cannot let grief defeat me. And it will, and it can if you allow it to. It will pull your self-worth so far down. And if you already have some of those limiting beliefs running in your background, then that can pull you into a despair, beyond despair, where it's hard to pull yourself out of. Now, <clears throat> I think that my lucky star is every day that I still have a child at home, because I don't know uh, everything that happened to me or happened during that time, I could have easily folded. I could have easily given up. And there were times when I really wanted to give up. And I was like, I can't. I got this little girl watching me. There is no way I am going to allow this into her subconscious. None of it. She's going to see me rise and she's always going to see me rise so that she knows that she too can rise above anything, right? <clears throat> okay, so I want to, um, did I share enough? Okay, so I went to the top of the company, boom, 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 top of the company for years, I was with that company for 11 years, and the rug got pulled out from beneath me, or from beneath us. We got hit with um, my stepdaughter, was diagnosed with cancer my daughter was diagnosed with cancer and she ended up passing away my husband during the cancer filed for divorce um there was another woman like so much going on my company my job that i loved and had a passion for was 
also going downhill. And so my income, you guys, at, at my peak, I was making in one month what a lot of people make in a year. I was making it in one month, okay? So when this combination of a storm hit and it pulled the rug out from under me and it pulled my self-esteem and it pulled my self-worth, all of it together, the money, the job, the having to start over. And I can remember saying, as I'm noticing these patterns, because I feel like that's a gift that I do have, is to see patterns and I hear frequencies and I can hear and see the, the pattern through frequencies and voice, if that makes sense. Um, so I was seeing it, I was feeling it, and my response was, I don't want to start over. I don't want to start over. Well, the universe, right? Our words are very powerful. So what ended up happening? I ended up having to start over. Why? Because that's the program. That's what I kept saying. I don't want to start over. And the universe heard, start over? Trisha Lewis wants to start over, deliver more of that, and let's start sweeping the rug out from under her, right? Okay, so long story short, I have tapped into my spirituality, which I can say that even though during that time I was in an attitude of gratitude, I grateful for everything and anything, very devoted to God, very into religion, um, you name it, all of it. Um, my heart was just full of gratitude. And we know now, or I know now, that gratitude is the highest form of vibration that is a match for manifestation. Write that down. Gratitude is the, will get you to the highest form of vibration to match up with manifestation. Okay, I want to start off with this book. It's a book of meditations to heal your life by Louise Hay. And this one is about money. And I, I just want to go into this. I really want to, I really want to say we should take a deep breath. Everybody take a deep breath. Put your hands on your chest, your heart. Sit, relax, however you feel comfortable. Let's just deep breath in. Let's say seven seconds six or five, however you feel comfortable. Hold it, five, six, seven seconds, however you feel comfortable. And exhale, five, six, seven seconds, wherever, whatever number you chose. Let's do that two more times. And as you're taking this next deep breath, I want you to imagine yourself pulling from the universe. It is source energy whatever that looks like to you, white, gold, glittery energy coming in, filling your lungs, hold it there, exhale. As you're exhaling, all that energy, source energy has pulled anything that does not belong, whatever you've picked up from other people, whatever you've picked up from TV or music, it is on its way out. It is so far on its way out, take another breath, that you can feel it leaving through the soles of your feet straight into Gaia, who's going to turn that into love and abundance. Deep breath. Hold. Exhale. Okay. In the area of finances, I am always prosperous. So, money loves me and comes to me like a beloved puppy. Money is merely a means of exchange, you guys. It is a form of giving and receiving. As I give to life, life gives to me in abundance in all of its many forms, including money. I am always financially secure. Money that comes to me is a pleasure to handle. I save some, I spend some, I help others with some. I eliminate thoughts of debt guilt, and any other negative, limiting belief, poverty-oriented way of thinking. It's eliminated. I always have enough money. Establishing credit is simple for me. I pay my bills with love and acknowledge my true source. Gratitude. Okay, so when this happened, and I had the rung pulled out from under me. I remember 
the, the main thing I didn't want to do was start over. Like I knew in my soul I was going to have to start over and I dreaded that beyond dread that it manifested quicker. And during that time, although I said I was going to church and I was a religious and into, you know, church volunteering and all that, it never, the only parts of me that I took from religion was the community and helping others and being of service to others and praising and glorifying and being grateful for the blessings when they come and being grateful for the storms when they come and trusting and surrendering and all of that. That's where I picked up all of those beliefs was in church. Now, what they don't talk to you about is your limiting beliefs, <laughs> right? So let's begin this little mantra affirmation. You can grab a pen and paper and write this down, but I'm also going to have it posted. And we're going to start clearing our limiting beliefs. And this is something I picked up um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe or Joe Vitale. I learned this from The Secret. And that's actually something my mom, when The Secret first came out, she sat us all down to watch it. When the VC or VHS tape came out, she bought it. We all watched it. It was like a thing to watch. We were supposed to watch what we said because words have power. I was taught that early and young. And so here we go. <clears throat> I am ready. I am open and I am willing to see things differently. I am ready. I am open and I am willing to see things differently. I am shifting my perception around money. I am able to now see the patterns of limiting beliefs. And I am able to rearrange my thought process. I am able to bring new timelines, new patterns, and I am also now entering a new experience with money. I welcome my highest shift towards money. Okay, so now that we have this space created, let's start identifying some of our limiting beliefs, okay? What are some of the limiting beliefs that we can identify with? Let's clear that baggage. And as I say that, it, it reminds me of the show hoarders, right? We, I mean, I'm talking people who've been holding on to baggage for a long time, that it manifested into their reality and now they need help clearing through that, sorting through that, guys. Um, so as we clear that baggage, imagine hoarder, as we're getting rid of all the stuff we don't need that we've been holding on to for years, what happens? We clear up space within our home, within their homes. That space is cleared up within our heart home when we clear that baggage. And it allows for new opportunities to come towards you. It allows for your new belief system, those wheels to start turning. It allows for the universe to say, all clear, drop those manifestations down, <laughs> right? So clearing is your fast track speed dial to manifesting, period. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> clearing those limiting beliefs is gonna help you fast track, think the Audubon, to manifesting, period, period, end of discussion, that's it. This is how you shift your perspective. This is how you shift your reality. You have got to dump that old baggage. Part of clearing or one step to clearing is forgiveness. You gotta forgive yourself. You gotta forgive your past. You have to forgive the people who imposed limiting beliefs on you. You have to forgive the people who wronged you or that you felt wronged you who did you dirty, who hurt you, who kicked you while you're down. You have to let that go, even if, you guys, I know, even if it was your own family, you cannot hold that grudge. It only hurts you. It only hurts you. And I learned this lesson late in life, years ago, but late in life, that when I held a grudge, you know what would what would get me even more? Is when I saw that person out living their life, happy-go-lucky, no care in the world, and here I am 
still holding on to that energy. Why? It is not even mine. It was there to serve a purpose, to teach me a lesson, but I didn't get it. Are you getting it? Are you holding on to a grudge? If you are, we're going to identify that and write it down, okay? Um, remember, you guys, things happen for us, not to us, okay? They happen for us. It's an opportunity for us to clear, to get rid of limiting beliefs, to heal our generational timelines, to heal to do better, be better, to usher in a new frequency, okay? Things happen for us, not to us. Write that down. Holding on to inner grudges is not going to allow new energy to flow. Imagine it like pipe, piping, okay? And if we never clear out the piping, piping, plumbing, whatever you want to call it, if we never clear that out, imagine the gunk that gets stuck in there. Are you going to have good flow? We're not going to have good flow. It's going to back up. It's going to clog up. It's going to be all mucky and yucky as it stagnates there. You've got to clear your energy. You've got to clear that limiting beliefs. You've got to clear the baggage and you've got to forgive. Forgive is, the, forgive is like your magic erase tool, right? Forgiveness just releases it all. So ask yourself, what are you afraid of? What fears do you have? And this can be around money. It can be around food. It can be about any relationship. It can be about a romantic relationship. Write it all down. What are you afraid of? What puts fear into you? Or what memories come up that are still bothering you? What does forgiveness mean to you? And when I say that, I want you to think back is there somebody in your life you are not forgiving? Is there somebody in your life you feel isn't worthy of forgiveness? Because I'm telling you, if you are holding on to that, you are also saying that you are not worthy of forgiveness. Okay? It's a two-way street. Um, what else do we want to talk about here? We are identifying limiting beliefs. We're identifying what... It has been said to us. How about let's bring that up. What are some other limiting beliefs around money in particularly that is holding you back? Maybe think of some things that you hear. Think of some things that you've heard or maybe you heard in your household. Um, how about money doesn't grow on trees? Oh, that's one. Um, money follows money. Or Money is the root of all evil. That's a religious programming. Money is the root of all evil. Um, what are some other ones? Think of some. As you think of some, write them down in the comments. And then let's go, let's talk about this. As you're writing those down, things that you've heard. How about you're not good with money? How about you're just like your father's side of the family, or you're just like your mother when it comes to money, or you're just not responsible with your money. Do you have any of those limiting beliefs running in your background? Because if it's not affecting you now, it will come up. I promise you this. Um, so let's clear that out. Let's get rid of that. Now, now that we've identified some of our limiting beliefs that were imposed on us or that we believe about ourselves, this next step is going, and we'll go over the questions, but this next step is this. If, if what I truly wanted in life was really not wrong, what would I want? What do you truly want in your life? Write that down. And if nobody would chastise me or downplay my dreams, what would that be? What would that look like? And if nothing bad was gonna happen to me, what would my life look like? And here's the clencher. Here's the clencher. If I fully trusted myself to do this healing work, what is it that I can see in my future? Well, let's say it like this. When I trust me to do this healing work, 
or as I am trusting myself to do this healing work, what is the life that I am calling in? What does that life look like? Okay. Now remember guys, a desire. When you have a desire placed on your heart, that nine times out of 10 comes from another higher perspective. Your higher self places that desire onto you. And that desire is part of your destination. It can be part of your life purpose. It can be part of what you're meant to be doing. But a desire without action, without taking the steps forward, without claiming it and owning it and visualizing that, your desire is only a dream. Your desire is only a dream without action, without inspired action, without creative action. It is just a dream. So <clears throat> how are we gonna call this dream into reality? We're gonna become an energetic match to that. And how do you raise your energy? With an attitude of gratitude. So make a list of all of the things that you are 100 and truly percent grateful for. Is that a word? 100 and truly percent? Um, make a list of what you're grateful for in your life. Make it five, 10 things, six things, six is harmony, six things that you are grateful for in your life right now. Okay. And, and write those down. Now we're going to, let's, let's make a list of these words that we don't even realize they automatically pop up, but it's in our system. So, okay guys, I'm asking you this. Hey, let's book a trip to Greece, seven day cruise trip. How many of you are saying, I can't afford that? Write that down, I can't afford that. We're gonna get rid of that. What about if I came to you and said, hey, I need you to help me budget. Here's $20,000, budget it for the week, blah, 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 blah whatever comes up, yada, yada, yada. And your first instinct is, she just asked me to budget how much money? I am really bad with money. Like this is not a task for me. If you feel like you're bad with money, write that down. Now, if, what's another one? And these are, these are just other, these are, these are just other things that we've probably heard other people say, but let me jump back to the can't afford that. Eliminate that, get rid of that. That is a limiting belief. And if you have been saying that to the universe over and over and time and time again, can you imagine how much clearing and cleaning has to be done to uproot that, to get that from the root in order for you to have new growth, okay? If you are saying you are bad with money, we're gonna flip that around and say, nah, nah fam, I'm good with money, okay? <laughs> I am good with money. We are shifting that reality. Here's another one. Um, when did I hear? TV shows, soap operas, um, Dynasty is coming to my head, movies. Why is it that the rich people, the wealthy people are also lonely? sad or greedy or evil um i'm gonna tell you why well i'm gonna tell you something money is an energy and whatever i'm gonna compare money to a crystal a quartz crystal in the sense that it is an amplifier so it's really gonna amplify whatever your beliefs are okay if you believe that money is evil guess what amplified money is going to be evil to you money is going to bring bad things to you but if you believe that money is what makes the world go around money is going to help you with this money is going to gift you the ability to help other people well hell that's a really good thing right that's a wonderful thing and if you are a good-hearted person and believes that money can help you do more good-hearted things then as you call in money to yourself, you're going to magnify that, right? Listen, there are probably the Scrooges in the world, right? Where they just hold on to everything. And how did they get that money? And often that's a limiting belief. It often seems that the people who don't need it are who get it. That's a limiting belief, you guys, because I, I probably guarantee you 
at the people who have money and are continuously getting money, they have the money because of their mindset, because they, they understand how it works. They're just not sharing it with other people, right? Um, so let's see. We need to establish that when we exchange, oh, here we go, here we go. Here's a, here's a good way to put an action item in to help you change your limiting beliefs on money. As you're swiping your debit card, I want you to imagine your debit card swipe is a boomerang. And as you boomerang to pay, that money is boom, -da -dum, -da -dum, making its way right back to you, right back to your pocket, right back to your bank account. So every time you are swiping, praise, praise, thank you, gratitude, more of that, because as you're swiping, you're boomeranging right back to your back pocket, okay? Um, that's one way of shifting unlimiting beliefs. How about thoughts, feelings, imagination, emotion? That's how we're gonna create that. Uh, yes, okay, so let's look around and see how can we have a bigger gratitude towards money. On paydays, do you get excited for paydays? Heck yeah. Yeah, if you get excited for paydays and then three days later you're out of that pay and then you're in the slums, then we need to fix that, right? We need to change that limiting belief. But how about when you're paying your bills? Does that bring you down or does that lift you up? Because be grateful. Now, I grew up, I grew up in a household, you know, my mom, when we were, when I turned 11, I think it was nine or 11, we were a single parent household. So having the lights on was a no-no. Like that was money. That was money being wasted. That was money down the drain. How many have heard that? So all of that came to me. <clears throat> so now when we're paying bills, instead of thinking, oh, she left that light on a little too long. I should have cut it. It would have saved me $10. Instead of that, be grateful. I have the money to pay for this. I'm a badass. I have the money to pay for this. I need new tires. Hell yeah, universe. We need new tires. Boomerang me. Let me pay for these new tires. Let me get it. Let me get it done. That attitude of gratitude is 100% contagious. So as we're doing that, as we're shifting our beliefs, as we're changing that emotion, that frequency amount around money, around paying our bills, around having an expense pop up, as we're changing that energy, we are creating change in the universe and the way it brings to us what we want, okay? So, I talked about swiping your card, da da da. And what else do we have here? Um, guess what, guys? Every single one of you, especially if you are in a place where Okay, Trisha, all these tips and tricks are great, but what if we don't have the money right now? Literally sitting with negative bank account or counting pennies or whatever. What can we do? And this is something I, I want you to dig deep inside yourself because within all of us, we have a natural born skill set. What are you good at? Or what do you feel you could be great at? Okay, so for me, um, I, I was a crafter. I'm a crafter. My mom taught us all how to paint. She taught us how to sew. She taught us how to cook. She taught us how to um, decorate cakes. I can, I have this abundance mindset that I will never have to do without because I have skill sets and hobbies that can create money for me. And anytime like the rug got pulled out from under me, I go right back to my money making skills. And quite honestly, you guys, if I'm being, you know, all the self discovery and all of the, the inner work I've been doing, it's usually your natural born skills is what you came here to do. Okay. Um, if you feel like you don't have a natural born skill, you've yet to tap into it. So what, whatever you see, it could be, um, it can be, let me think, I'm trying to think spiritually where I'm on a spiritual page today. So it can be Reiki. If you are interested in Reiki, if you are interested in tarot, if these have always called to you, 
it is in you um, to create money. Jolene talks about north nodes a lot, north and south nodes. I talk, to, talk about it a little bit here and there. But within your north node in your astral chart, there's clues in there. There's indicators on what where your career set should be. Um, all of this is in your zodiac, in your chart. And if you haven't discovered this about you or you don't know where to begin, I would say take a deep dive into your natal chart. There's free natal charts online and really start learning yourself. That's something that comes up a lot from ancient days is know thyself. And for me, the quickest way for me to learn myself was diving into astrology, um, learning about my zodiac. Then it was learning about the different houses and the placements and the north nodes and that really helped me understand, oh, this is why I do this. Ah, this is part of my calling. This is why I, I, I enjoy doing this type of work, blah, blah, blah. And teaching, learning and teaching and gathering experience and gathering knowledge and sharing that, that's part of my genetic makeup, my cosmic makeup and what I'm supposed to be doing here, okay? So why I, I was prompted to make this video. Now, what else do we have here? So every one of us has a skill set that we can make money to make money with. If you don't, tap into that that calling. What is it that's calling you? Do you want to learn woodworking? Do you want to learn how to paint? Do you want to become a makeup artist? All of these things can make you money and you don't really need much. You don't have to invest in college to do that because that that is a limiting belief that you have to go to school to a good school or have a degree to make money. That's a limiting belief. You do not listen. I have a nursing degree. I'm not working in that department. And I wasn't working in that, in that field when I was making the money that I was making. So limiting belief, get it out of your head. Okay. It's lack mentality. So here's the next step I want you guys to do. Once you've identified your, um, limiting belief systems and things that you grew up listening to and took on is look at your circle of friends. If you're five is the, is the number, right? If you're if the five people closest to you are constantly bitching and complaining about money or don't have enough or are constantly borrowing are in lack mentality, find new friends. The first thing you need to shift is the people around you. And quite honestly, if you're not ready to make new friends, still dump that and go within and become your best friend. Same thing with romantic advice. If you are bringing in the wrong kind of partners, ditch them all and partner up with you and become your best romantic partner, okay? And give yourself the things that you are desiring and needing and lacking, okay? Now, <clears throat> Once we've identified all of these things, we're going to go into what I call creative visualization. And I keep looking at the clock saying, oh my God, I'm going too far. So visualization is the fastest way that I can create a new reality. I have to see it in my head. And I was, well, I don't want to jump off the subject, but I have to see it in my head. Once I see it in my head, I am able to put all of the missing components into place that will help me get to where I need to be. So visualization is important. The next step over to visualization and what can help you with that is a vision board. If you're not familiar with vision boards, drop a comment and let me help you get started because that is number one way to get that creativeness in your mind. Um, the next thing I want you to do with your creative visual visualization, take it a step further and put yourself in the movie of your future in the movie of what your life will look like when you are living the life of your dreams, what you're trying to manifest. Visualize it, see it, put action to it, movie, put action to it. What does it look like? What are you doing? How are you helping? How are you giving back? How are you promoting other people to lift up as well? Um, Another way to do this and <clears throat> clearing my throat chakra and I'm wearing blue, hi. If you are not, if you are somebody who has a hard time visualizing or creating 
or seeing things in your mind, the next best thing is journaling. Write it all down. Write what you want, literally, word for word, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Make that part of your morning mantras. Um, you can do it 10 times. You can do it 20 times. You can do it 30, whatever number you want. 55 times somebody does. And write what you're trying to call in over. Just like, remember when you were learning spelling words in grade school, we had to write the word 10 different times, then use it in a sentence to make sure we knew. Same concept, you guys, same concept. And none of this, none of this is new stuff. Like I picked this up from The Secret, Joe Dispenza, um, Joe Vitale, like, Delore, this is everywhere. These, it's just about putting it into practice. So I'm gonna ask you, what would your dream life look like if you gave yourself permission to dream? What would it look like if you woke up tomorrow living the life that you are ready for today? Living the life that you know that you are worthy of? Living the life that you've given yourself permission to have? Visualize that. Feel it, write it down. What does it feel like? What emotion does that feel like? Do you guys know what it's like to go grocery shopping and not have to look at price tags, not have to look at the price, not have to clip coupons, not have to put a few things back at the end of the register? I've done both. I've just grabbed, grabbed, grabbed and gone. And I've been the person who is literally with the calculator writing down and tallying it up so much so that I started doing it in my head without a calculator just by rounding up a couple of dollars and panicking myself because I'm like it's gonna be two hundred dollars I only have 206 in the account and then when I go and check out it was like 160 something because I overcompensated because of fear right and then when I get to the register and it was less than and I have more it's like oh okay Oh, we're good. Oh, yeah. But I tell you what, I love it a lot more when I am shopping and I don't need to do that. So let's get back up to that. Commit to this because you guys, you are worthy. You are worthy of this. And after this video, it's going to have the questions um, popped up. But my main thing that I want you guys to do after you've done these steps, after you've written these down and you've identifying your limited beliefs, actually, I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. I'm gonna make another video separate from this and we'll get it Thursday. So I'm gonna give you guys from today to Thursday to do this part of the homework, um, to write down your limiting beliefs, to write down what you've heard, identify these things within you, how can you change them? And then Thursday, I'm gonna give you the third one and it's the one that is the biggest game changer for me so thank you guys for tuning in i'm sorry that i kept you guys this long actually no i'm not a lot of great information a lot of great information um i made it in a video so that you can pause it you can go back to it you can save the link i'm gonna put this on my youtube i haven't used my youtube channel since my direct sales days but you know the universe is telling me it's time trisha you got a lot of knowledge share it because as you start sharing it and embracing it again you too will rise so guys we're going up together you ready i want to see you at the top love you love and light always <laughs>